and welcome to this fly tying video. Today we're going to tie an iridescent pheasant tail nymph in device. I have the partridge check nymph hook. This one is a size 12 and this is a quite heavy wire hook. And we're going to tie this not using much of the hook but we're just going to go a little bit down the bend here and this is going to make this size 12 more look like a size 14 or a size 16 it's, quite, it's a quite nice technique to use if you don't either can tie on smaller hooks or if you don't want to you can just if you want a little smaller fly instead of tying it the whole way just use a size 12 and tie a size 14 on it, it works really well and here I have a brass bead a uh, black brass bead 2.8 millimeters. So for the thread I'm going to change it up a little and instead of using my usual uni 6 volt, I'm going to go with this ultra strong white from Benecki. This one is a 12 volt in white and if you have any 8 volt, it works also really well but I'm going with this one so I'm just going to start right behind the bead and here I'm also not putting on any lead free wire behind the bead it's going to make for a little lighter fly but this heavy wire hook is going to pull it down a little bit as well and then the first material and where the fly gets its name from is this iridescent thread from Benecki as well this one is in the color light lilac I'm going to tie this in right here at the back and here I'm just having it in a spool for easy access and use but you could also just tie in a little piece and then wind it up by hand or with your fingers and here I'm going to take this down just a little bit down the band and then back up again four or five turns or so and this is going to be our little hot spot so then I'm going to take this iridescent thread and I'm going to go up with touching turns and here put a little bit of pressure on it it's a little bit elastic this material but don't pull too much on it. it it's not actually like a thread it's a multitude of threads or different tinsels or small iridescent threads mixed together and then once we reach the thread Tie it off with a few turns and then just cut it off the length of the body. And I have also used this iridescent thread to do the whole bodies on flies and use it to tie the actual fly just with a coat of UV resin at the end. It works also really well. And then to secure this little tag, because Right now, if a fish would get its teeth in here, it could pull everything away. It's not that strong of a material, but with the addition of a little bit of super glue all over, it will make this a lot stronger. And then I'm just going to remove the excess of glue or move it around just a little bit so I can continue tying the fly. These types of super glue they set really fast, but only if you have the two pieces stuck together. So if you just put a coat over, it would take a little longer to set. And then I'm going to add a little tail as well. And here I have some medium part of Coq de Leon. And here I'm taking four or five fibers, bring them 90 degrees from the stem. So all the tips are aligned, and then tear them off. And here we're going to measure the length of the tail, it's going to be about the length of the body. And I'm going to tie this in right after the little tag. And there I'm quite happy with the length. And then for a rib, because we're using pheasant tail fibers, it's not a so durable material. I'm going to rib the whole fly. It will make a nice segmented effect and also helps the pheasant tail stay in place. So here I'm taking some small wire. This one is in gold. 
If you would like to tie a little darker variant of this fly, you could also use a black wire or any other contrasting color if you want to add a little more pop to it. And here I'm going to tie this in on my way up. And here I'm going to, with touching turns, bind down all the materials. And doing it this way, it's going to ha make a nice smooth underbody. And then we can cut off the cocktail and then a few steps back. And here I'm going to take the pheasant tail. Here I have a feather. This one has been dyed in a dark brown color, but it would also work really well with a natural one or any color you want. Actually, you could tie this in olive or in yellow or in black and it will all imitate different kinds of little insects and then to tie these in I'm going to take tips that are quite aligned I'm going to do one loose turn on my side and then I'm going to pull the fibers and at the same time I'm going to take my thread back and this way the tips will extend right to the bead but we don't have to cut anything and then taking down this I'm going to go down right to the tag and then I'm going to go up again and here we want to make quite smooth underbody for the pheasant tail to lie down to and then back again almost to the end and then back up again and this is going to make a slight taper to the fly as well and then back to the half point and then back up again and here if you would be using an 8 dot this will go a little bit faster but works well with a 12 volt as well and then to secure the pheasant tail even more we are also going to add the rib but just for a little bit of extra security I'm going to put down a thin coat of super glue and then we can start winding up the pheasant tail make sure to get this started right and here if you have a rotary vise you could also use this function and taking this up with touching turns I'm going to go the whole way up to the bead and then once we reach the thread you can just tie these off with a few turns then cut these off close and now I'm going to bring the rib up the first turn straight and then with open turns I'm going to take this up about five six times or so and here I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on this just to make the pheasant tail stay where it is and then tie this one off as well now we can bend and break this off then I'm going to change thread and here I'm going with a nano silk from Samplefly and this one is in the color beige and is an 18 aught so even smaller than 12 aught I'm just used to finish off my flies with this really thin thread so I'm going to change but you could also just keep the 12 volt in white I just prefer the beige one to the white one so then tie down the other thread and cut everything away and then for the last part of this fly it's going to be the thorax and here I'm going to use my own dubbing blend this one is the dark or a little darker horse here with a little bit of spikier fibers so here to apply this I'm going to use the split thread technique and here the idea is to keep this quite sparse I just want to make the impression of some legs so here I spin your bobbin counterclockwise this is going to uncord the thread and you will be able to split it 
and then I'm going to insert a little bit of the stubbing at a time and here we don't need much just a sparse, sparse color of dubbing on this fly. So there we have enough. Then close the thread and we're going to spin the bobbin clockwise again. And this is going to core the thread and trap all the fibers in between. And doing it this way, it's going to have a lot longer fibers instead of doing it just dubbing it onto the thread. And it's also going to be really secure as the two pieces of thread are going to be corded around the material and then also around the hook. So it's going to make for a nice and secure thorax. And then once you have enough turns, just build up a little thorax and here I'm pulling everything back as I go and then as I, I'm using this really thin thread I will be able to pull it really hard and it's going to go right inside the bead and you won't even see the thread and then I'm going to put a little bit of super glue onto the thread and this is going to help me get the glue inside the bead and also secure the thread really well. Three turn whip finish and then pull tight and cut off. And there we have the iridescent pheasant tail nymph. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time and happy time.